you have 15 Senate Democrats who all except one are fairly staunch gun control advocates. The, mm -hmm. the two leading gun control advocates in the, in the Senate are Senator Floyd Przanski, who's from Eugene, mm -hmm. and then Senator Jenny Burdick, who you might have heard that name before, and she's from Portland. I think it was somebody from Portland. I think I did read that much. Yeah. I mean, I was just like walking through, and I just, I was stunned at that. Um, right. You know, I, I, don't, I don't like it when, you know, half the uh, country believes in our Constitution, and we get called names by people who are supposed to, that, that we pay taxes to, to, so they have their job, by the way. Well, and that's, the challenge that we're facing is exactly what you're talking about here, is, is that we came in, and we'll go back, and I said, I said you know, we, we offered to talk about PERS, we offered mm -hmm. to sit across the table and talk about revenue, and when we mean sit across the table, it's like, okay, both sides educated each other, right? And we said early on in the, on the gun control and the mental health issues, I said, look, let's get a work group of four people, two Democrats and two Republicans. Let's get the, the subject matter experts. Let's bring in the sheriffs and the police and the staff members and all the various people. And let's look at what we're doing now and see how we can improve and enforce existing laws right now, how we can address the issues. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're going to make proposals on your side that we in the end probably won't agree with, but we'll listen to your proposals. You explain why they are. You listen to our proposals and we'll see where we can find common ground. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, what happened is, as you just point out, is there was a whole bunch of name calling on that side of the aisle in which they made a whole bunch of derogatory remarks, much more worse than what you've even said now, because <laughs> I've dealt with these. Uh. And they made all this stuff. And then they, when they had hearings on the existing bills they had, mm -hmm. instead of sitting down in a bipartisan effort with both sides and walking through the deals, they just walked in with their amendments and said, well, I listened to everything that the, everybody mm -hmm. said, and this is what I've decided we're going to do and tried to railroad it down the road. And in this building, we have a little cliche that says, well, that bill has a constitutional problem. And what the constitutional problem means is they can't get to 16 votes. Uh -huh. And in the case of, unfortunately, in, in, in there were four, five, six gun bills, really. Mm -hmm. There were six gun bills that were out there. One was a land use fire range safety mm -hmm. bill. One was a sheriff's bill in which had reasonable, that I think the vast majority of, of, the, uh, of the hunting and gun owner groups agreed with. Uh, and then there were four bills that two of them actually made sense, but when they finished writing them, they didn't make sense. And because of the, for better word, toxic discussions that went on and not having bipartisan support, all of them died. Even the two good bills mm -hmm. ended up dying and being sent to rules. Mm -hmm. So, but this nothing is nothing has been done. Nothing has been done. But you got to remember, this is a very religious building. Uh -huh. Things can rise from the dead around here all the time. <laughs> so until the public is not safe on any issue until Sunny die. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what kind of religious building this is, but <laughs> I don't you think it's the same. That, right? Well, no, no. I get what you're saying. I, they, they don't follow my religion. <laughs> Put it that way. You know. Um, so. I guess on a positive note, um, the Senate Veterans and Community Preparedness, um, you're in that committee and you're advocating for the veterans. veterans. Yeah, that's good. Veterans Emergency Preparedness has been doing a, a variety of work in the House. There's a House committee and in the Senate. Um, we've been dealing with, with veterans issues in, ter mm -hmm. in terms of, as you pointed out, suicide prevention, suicide response. Mm -hmm. How do we deal with d aid with PTSD, um, working on tuition assistance. We're working on helping the dependents of Purple Heart and deceased veterans who were mm -hmm. killed in action. Um, also, in addition to that, on the emergency preparedness side, we're dealing with set, with issues. We just finally came out. We've been at this eight years and came out with what's called the Oregon Resilience Plan, which is a convoluted, highfalutin name of, say, what happens if there's a major earthquake or disaster and how do we respond? And, you know, it took us eight years for a task force and a group of people to come up with a plan, right, to say, well, this is these are the problems. And, and, of course, some of them are pretty obvious in terms of, you know, if, if, if there's a big earthquake, the bridges fall down. So then you've got to repair the bridges. And, <laughs> but trying to get common sense, you know how bureaucrats are, trying to get all the bureaucrats to say, okay, have you, have you looked at this issue right here or what's going to happen in this emergency? How are we going to respond? And you'd be amazing because, you know, when, when we started this out in 2005, the typical Red Cross thing was is that, okay, every, every household should have a three-day supply of food. Mm -hmm. And three-day supply of water. And of course now, in the way the modern world is now, and even at my house, we can go 10 days without electricity. So we have, yeah. we have obviously more than 10 days worth of food and supplies at our house. But you know, individuals need to be prepared that things aren't gonna go well with the government or something's gonna be had. And just trying to educate the public that don't expect the services that you have now to exist. And 
it's actually a good platform also to start right. discussing yeah. and say, hey, you need to be, be more prepared yourself. And the reason being is, is we go back to to the very beginning here of what this legislature for. Legislature has to pass the budget. And almost a third of our budget comes from the federal government. Federal government's borrowing 40 cents on the dollar. Federal yeah. Reserve is printing $85 billion a month. That's all going to have to go away here very shortly. And so there's going to be a severe budget cut in services and service levels, and people are going to have to start taking care of themselves again. Well, of course, it has to go away shortly because uh, it's un unsustainable. But what do you mean by that? Is, um, is the federal government um, cutting you off? Well, yeah, you know. actually what is transpiring, what most people don't know, is is the federal government is, it's like state government cuts off the county governments, right? Mm -hmm. you, know, you keep the money for yourself and, you, and you know, oh. that's how it generally works. Mm -hmm. And so what has happened at the federal level is the same thing, because most of the $17, $18 billion we get in a, in a biennium from the federal government is grants, and most mm -hmm. of those grants are being reduced by 50 anywhere from 35 to 50 percent. That's before sequestration. Now that sequestration is hit, you know, they're talking about larger reductions in, in money. And this is, of course, in theory, money we gave to the, as taxpayers to the federal mm -hmm. government and while the federal government gave it back to us to spend. Now, of course, being a Republican, I'd say, why, we shouldn't give it to the federal government at all. We should just keep it. Mm -hmm. Let the people keep their money and let them spend it on what they need to. We don't need to cycle it all the way to Washington and come back. But those budget issues are having an impact, and they're mm -hmm. going to have, have an impact presently in the budget planning. And then, as you know, you've seen the national level, sequestration and the federal government and how they're going to balance the budget there. And again, every time they do something in Washington, it has an impact on one-third of the state budget. Mm -hmm. Which, if we didn't have all these special interests and in, in places where the money's going, where they really shouldn't be going anyway, right. it wouldn't be a problem. Right. right, but everybody's a special interest in Washington, D.C., <laughs> including the congressman. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately. We just had a debate today on the floor of the Senate over suntanning beds. And the argument was, well, parents aren't responsible enough, so they can't take care of their ch children, so the state should. Oh, no. So so wait a minute. So you want the, teach the parent to participate in the school system and be responsible for their kids, mm -hmm. but you want to take away all the parental authority for the same kids at the same time. I hope that didn't go over well. Well, it didn't go it over well, it. but it passed. Yeah, it did. Yeah, it, it did pass. So what does that mean? Well, it's, it passed out. It was a bill. And so now individuals that are under the age of 18 have to get a parental permission and a doctor slip to get a suntan. So before the it was parental permission. Before it was parental permission. Now it's a doctor slip too. Now you gotta have a doctor slip, and of course you know. And, and then there was the argument about well, if they were taking. And of course the flip side is you know, then you turn to the medical side and say, okay, you know I oh, support the medical they'll side. They'll get sued if they give them permission. Or the flip side of it is is what you gotta remember is is even the medical associations say thirty percent of all medical procedures are unneeded. Mm. So 30% of what we spend our money on for medical procedures weren't needed at all. They were overprescribed. Mm. And I hate to, to rag out on doctors, but, you know, when they're killing 100,000 people a year by mistakes, too, and now we're going to add sunban sun, sun tanning into this thing. And so th the question you have to ask yourself is, is, you know, when we had medical marijuana cards, you know, when they first started it is, well, this is for a medical reason, and you go to some doctors and they're writing the prescriptions. As long as you give them 250 bucks, they'll write your prescription for medical marijuana. So the problem we're going to have with with suntanning is now you first you have some bunch of doctors to just write prescriptions but mm -hmm. as several senators in eastern oregon pointed out on the floor today in this particular bill it's it's wait a minute right now you have a regulated industry that you, know, you have to have parental consent you have to have individuals who operate the booths if a if minor or adult goes into a suntan booth in a commercial enterprise they have they can only do so many minutes under the law so on and so forth and now as he as the senator held up there there are th there are hundreds of suntan beds for sale for a hundred to two hundred dollars you can buy online so now what you're going to do is you're going to have teenagers buying or, or miners buying it, putting it in their garage and all the neighbor kids doing it, and you're actually going to cause more injury to people than what you're doing right now. Yeah, or you're going to have lawsuits going against doctors because, well, you know, my child got um, such and such skin, you know, disease right. because you gave permission, so now we're going to sue you. Now now the rates are going to go up on everybody because exactly. of that, yeah. or uh, no, no good deed goes unpunished. Yeah, well, you know, we're out of time. If there's any last thing you want to say, I know you got to get going. No, no, I appreciate the opportunity to come on. I, I would just hope and tell everybody, if you see something that the legislature is doing or something you either like or don't like and you want us to try and look at it, a bill or something, contact us. Mm -hmm. Email us or call us. And the reason being is, is there are 2,000 bills moving. Mm -hmm. 
very limited volunteer and professional staff that are here. And so if you read it in the local newspaper, don't assume we know it. Yeah. Because as this one, suntan bill came to the floor. It was the first time I'd ever heard of it. Hmm. 